You're watching The Sports Objective, the podcast for Pirates. You're listening to A Pirate's Life for Me on The Sports Objective. Join us every Friday at noon as we catch up with a member of Pirate Nation. Here's your host, Bubba Rosenbaum. What is going on, Pirate Nation? Welcome into another edition of A Pirate's Life for me here on the Sports Objective. Uh, we appreciate everyone tuning in, as always, whether it's on Facebook Live, YouTube, or pretty much anywhere podcasts are found. You can find us. Uh, today, we are talking East Carolina athletics with a guy that's been a Pirate for 40-plus years and uh, done so much to help the cause of East Carolina University and specifically his athletics program. And we'll dive into that um, as we progress with the conversation. But right now, like to welcome in a native and resident of Dunn, North Carolina, Perry Hudson. Perry, we appreciate your time this afternoon. Bob, I sure appreciate the opportunity. Anytime I can do anything or talk about pirates, as you can, I'm wearing my purple. You know, I'm I'm one of these guys. I don't wait to Friday to wear purple. I wear purple every day. My wife swears I do, but uh, I'm a pirate through and through. Uh, uh, three of my children graduated from there. So I'm, yeah, I'm very excited. I'm always a pretty excited guy anyway, and. I try to stay as positive as I can and uh, love it. Love uh, the opportunity to, to talk about pirate athletics as well as East Carolina University. And I just thank you for having me. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, I get told the same all the time as far as, uh, you know, most time, most of the time I am wearing uh, something East Carolina, you know, whether it's Friday or not. And uh, numerous occasions uh, I have been told, you know, you're a walking billboard for East Carolina. So uh, it's something I've, laughed about and certainly uh, continued to do through the years and um, definitely more purple and gold than anything else in my uh, closet. But, um, you know, take us back there to the late seventies, early eighties. I know you were a 1979 graduate of Dunn high school. Uh, so talk about those years, you know, just uh, your familiarity with East Carolina and then why you made that decision to attend East Carolina. Well, let's, you know, you know, back in the, I played, uh, I went to Dunn High School and I was, I was fortunate that I, I kind of hit a growth spurt. I'm, I'm actually the same size I was at 12 years old that I am now. My grandfather was about six foot six, so everybody kept expecting me. So I played four years of varsity baseball and four years of varsity football at Dunn High School. And, um, you know, the first person to, you know, I knew about East Carolina University, of course, in, back in the days I was growing up as a young child about anything anybody knew about was Notre Dame football. And that's because they played it on Sundays with Lindsey Nelson. And so, you know, I guess growing up as a child, I thought Notre Dame was the only college football team in the country pretty much. But obviously as we get older and get into high school and things of that nature, and uh, it's not like today where you have the big recruiting things and things of that nature, but um, uh, a man named Pat Drawn, who's from Dunn and, uh, good Lord, taken we was was taken uh, way too soon uh, in, a, in a car accident. Uh, he was actually the first person to actually talk to me about East Carolina University, and I remember uh, in high school before Friday night football games, we would go over to to Pat Drawn's house and out, outside he lived outside of Dunn, but um, he was a big, big, big time supporter of East Carolina University, and he was the first person that kind of gave me some in, uh, influenced me, I guess towards East Carolina, I, he, just the passion that he had and what he brought was, uh, was, you know, I was, was, was really, it really set to me, you know, what the, the things that I were looking in, in my future as far as, uh, you know, trying to further my education and things of that nature. But, um, yeah, I mean, um, you know, I was excited about, you know, when I went to Greenville the first time is, you know, Back then, I, again, uh, I spoke with you earlier. I grew up kind of poor, I, and so I kind of I was kind of born with a chip on my shoulder. I, I loved it. You know, my friends used to be go to Campbell basketball camp. Obviously, my family couldn't afford it, so um, I, you know, I would I would sit out there and shoot jump shots in the rain, and I wasn't going to let anybody get any better than me. So just because they were going to camps and things, and those those are kind of things I kind of carried over in my life. I, I like, and I think. Uh, just speaking with you earlier, I talked about, you know, I'm kind of kind of the kind of person I like people to tell me I can't do something because, you know, I'm going to work even harder to be able to, to, you know, to not just 
not not a spiteful thing, but you know, just something that gives me drive and and something that I can uh, live my life by. You know, um, uh, I but you know, to get what got me to East Carolina, you know, was just uh, the love of the university and being up there and being able to visit it. Um, you know, I went up there to attempt to play baseball, and um, that was a uh, you know when you when you. I had a little bit of little, you know, back then I was being recruited a little bit by Lewisburg Junior College coach Russ Frazier, and um, I went to a Cincinnati Reds uh, baseball camp. They, they used to be held out at um, at Campbell College years ago, and um, you know, as we, you had to be invited. I was it was my junior year uh, during the summer, uh, and I think that was the first time I had any interaction with any coaches. Uh, I think coach my coach. Um, Monty Little was there, but I think the rings were changing over. Yeah, because uh, at that Coach time, Baird and Baird was eighty to eighty four, yeah. correct? Yeah, uh, Coach Baird would Coach Baird, and actually, I think Coach Overton was the assistant, or he was he was doing something with the staff, right? And I, you know, interacted with him, um, but um, I, I was, it was very very late. I'd actually committed to to try to, to play baseball at. Um, at uh, Lewisburg with Coach Frazier, so it's kind of a late, uh, late situation. But I think, um, you know, basically, um, they liked the speed I had and things of that nature. They didn't get to see a lot back then. You know, you play, I played Legion baseball. They didn't have, they didn't have travel baseball. We traveled, but it was by a van, <laughs> so it wasn't, uh, you know, it wasn't like it is today. It's, right. Everybody's got, everybody's got a huddle and everybody's got stats yeah. and things of that nature. But you know, you know, God's got a plan for everything, and I got down there, and I was, you know, it was, you know, it was no money involved whatsoever. You know, I was just uh, invited to try out, basically, just like anybody else. You know, they wanted to, and that team happened to be loaded with middle infielders, <laughs> which uh, obviously was not was not didn't bear well for me. I know they had Kelly Robinette at shortstop, Michael Sorrell from South Johnson, who I'd played high school baseball against, and some others. But um, you know, I think they in uh in talking with them, you know, we, that was kind of the 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 reason not not the main reason I went, but one of the reasons I went was just the opportunity to, to have an opportunity, I guess you'd say. Uh, I never did play on the baseball team as per se on the roster, but had the opportunity and and was invited to be able to try out and things of that nature. And they wanted me to kind of work on some things, and then come back and of course. You know, just being quite frank and honest with you, uh, you know, as I'm not the only person I'm sure this ever happened to, but I, I didn't understand that uh, on the way to the elbow room, you actually had to attend those buildings that were in between where you lived. <laughs> so <laughs> I had a few setbacks in my academics and things of that nature. But, uh, you know, all in all, being uh, be honest with you, my love for university started, you know, day one. Um you know, there was some there was some good times and bads as far as academics went and things of that nature. But it was, it, you know, to me, it's, it's 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 a family environment. Still is to this day. I mean, you can go anywhere in the country just about and find pirates. And um, you know, it's uh, you know, I, I I I wouldn't I wouldn't change a thing, honestly. You know, I would lo- I'd love to have played for the baseball team and honestly the football team as well. I love football actually better than I do baseball. But, um, you know, it's uh, it's just, you know, I, I'm I've always been a sports fanatic, love, you know, love playing sports. That's all I did my whole life. And uh, it was just a great fit for me. Um, you know, my, my my parents were very young when they had me. And so, um, you know, that I was the first one to actually attend college. So that was that was big for our family. And um, the good thing I'm most proud about now is I've had. Uh, three children graduate from there. My oldest daughter, she's 39, I think. She teaches at Wintergreen Elementary up there. And then I also have a, 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 her, her man, that's Mandy. And then Courtney, she graduated uh, in three and a half years. So she was the opposite of her father, very, very intelligent young lady. And uh, she does well. She works with, uh, with the hospital uh, weight med situation. Well, actually, I take that back. She's credentialing for, uh, I think, UNC school. Uh, Chapel Hill now, or UNC House, whatever they call it, and then of course my son Blaze, he's he's actually working with the Pirate Club, and um, poor boy never had a chance, I guess, because um, it was he was born in '96, I think that was the year uh, Hurricane Fran came through, and um, 
we uh, <laughs> we had no power, no nothing. Uh, called a buddy of mine. Game was on, so guess where we went? And it was Blaze's first game. He was, you know, I guess five, four, five, six months old, and he never missed another game. So I think he's been to every home game since. So I don't know if many many people can say that. And he's twenty, I guess, twenty six years old now. So um, and right now he's getting a, he's getting a good dose of it because he has to work some of them games now. So, but uh, I know that's kind of a long. I, I, I'm one of these guys who gets a little bit long winded. So you may have to cut me off, Bubba. I, no, know, uh, uh, great information and background there uh, to your connection, not only yourself, but your family to East Carolina University. So you know, take us back to the early 80s and just what it was like uh, around the program. You know, I guess you graduated from high school in 79. So it was right, right. right when uh, Pat Dye and that era was ending. Uh, Coach Dye was moving on to Wyoming just for one season and then to Auburn and then Coach Emery who was uh, our head coach from 80 to 84, um, you know, really yeah. got some uh, things done there in the early 80s, specifically 82 and 83. So what are your memories of uh, East Carolina football and then also just uh, athletics in general there in the early 80s? Definitely, you know, I mean, Coach Dye had laid some groundwork. And, and another thing, just I had some some guys that that uh, were from Dunn. Fred Chavis played for Coach Dye. Um uh, he's a, uh, these guys are just a few years older than I am. Billy Tart also played center there back in the early seventies. So, uh, you know, these, and these guys, uh, they, they're still around. And I know Billy's a big supporter of the pirate club and, uh, Fred, he was, he was one of the guys that he actually was a running back and coach Dye turned him into a defensive end. So, um, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of guys that were, um, you know, really, you know, it was, a uh, I think they called them the skinny leg boys back then or something like that. But uh, yep, I know, uh, uh, you know, Fred was very, uh, you know, he was, he was a heck of an athlete, no doubt about it. And, uh, but yeah, Coach Dye kind of transitioned. He went to Wyoming and then, of course, Ed Emery, who has, you know, I think anybody that knows Ed Emery knows he's, you know, he was uh, the epitome of an East Carolina guy. I mean, he, he loved it. He breathed it. You know, he was, you know, that, that the class, I guess, of um, I want to say as the year we went eight and three or whatever, it was just, you know, that team was probably uh, by, you know, I wouldn't say by far, but one of the, you know, one of the best teams uh, East Carolina probably ever put up. To, even, you know, obviously uh, the best year we had, I was, was the Peach Bowl years, you know, in, in the, in 91 into 92. But, um, Coach Emery, you know, I, I got to meet him. I didn't know him very well, but, you know, because I'm, you know, as a young guy, I'm still trying to sow my oats and figure out what I'm doing. But, um, you know, I know I didn't know quite, a, you know, I knew some a lot, a lot of different, some of the football players and stuff like that. And that they were, uh, he was just, you know, a great guy. I mean, uh, Coach Emery was, um, you know, and it was, uh, those teams were, you know, it was one of them things I can remember. And I, you know, I think it's, it was any time, any place, anywhere, you know, it was one of those things. And we played a lot of really good schools. I think the year, I want to say the year that we did lose the three games, I bet it, I, I want to say that uh, it was to Florida state, Florida and Miami, if I remember correctly. And I want to say, well, like one, one game was one point. The other one was, uh, you know, a ball that was, should have been knocked down and just caught by – I can't remember. But it was just – you know, we were really about three plays away from being undefeated. And uh, I want to say – I'm not really sure. Bubba, you probably know this. I, I, Of course, I'm getting a little bit old. I want to say Miami might have won a national championship that year. I mean – You're correct. I call, it, they, they, I, I, call, I call it the mythical national championship because until they have a – in my opinion – of course, this is Perry's opinion <laughs> – until we have a – you know – uh, and I and I harp on this quite a bit sometimes, you know. Until we have a, a full blown playoff, and when I say that, it doesn't have to be sixty four teams like the you know NCAA basketball. But in my opinion, you, you know, you you could have a twelve to sixteen team, you know, give every conference the champion, every conference champion, and then you know if the rest of the teams have to be from the SEC, let them be, and then just you know, to me, you know, and and the reason I say things like that, you know, you're you're you know, that's going to be a lot of 
it gives it gives a, these these smaller school or smaller conferences, I per se, you know, an opportunity. And I point to a, a, a team in basketball, you know, where they do give all these things. Nobody would know anything. Wouldn't know anything about Gonzaga or Butler or anything if they if it was done the same way base, uh, football's done. I mean, it, you know, it just makes sense to me. You know, it gives you. I guess it's back to the old chip on the shoulder. It gives you the opportunity. You know, teams that have had run Cincinnati kind of broke in it last year, but you know these are these are recruiting tools. These are things that can that can help universities. And I do understand why they don't because they're trying to keep all the money where you know where it is. And it's like I tell anybody else: if uh, something don't seem right, just follow the money. So when we know where all the money's going at this time, it's basically turned into a, you know now as we speak a power two conference and it looks like it's heading in that direction. So, but I'm yeah. hoping that they're based on that, you know, and I know I've got, kind of got a little bit off the subject, but based on that, I'm hoping that they're, they're following through with what they're talking about and give it, you know, give the uh, other schools at least a one shot that gives East Carolina an opportunity to be able to play in the playoffs. So if that whole show gets what they voted on, what an 18 playoff or something like that. But, uh, yeah, you know, there's been the, the talk of a 12-team playoff, and you know, it really seemed like it was going to happen. And then some of those uh, powers that you referenced uh, shot it down uh, for uh, for the reasons that you mentioned. And uh, and then uh, we'll see. It seems like it's going to happen now once again. So we shall see in the next few seasons. But And you mentioned the, the chip-on-the-shoulder mentality. And, uh, you know, I wanted to go back to that. Uh, during the pre-show backstage, we were talking about Leo Jenkins, uh, Robert Morgan, and how influential they were at East Carolina University, um, you know, on the university, the academic side, as well as the athletics department and, uh, you know, the football yeah. program with Chancellor Jenkins and uh, using that as uh, the front porch of the university and so forth. But, you know, take us back um, to those years. Um, did you ever have the opportunity to, to meet uh, Chancellor Jenkins? I, I did not. It was a little bit before my time. I, I'm old, but not, you know, not quite. Right. I, I wish I had. Um, but, I, you know, I, I know a, lo a lot about him. And, I, and the reason I, I do is because, I you know, I was, uh, I guess, obviously, I, I know some people that knew him uh, from the area, obviously. I knew Robert Morgan very well. You know, he's a lawyer, successful lawyer here in Harnett County from the Lillington area. Um, you know, he, he passed on several years ago, but he was a, you know, he was a, he was very big in helping, I think, get the medical school going. You know, um, it's a good thing about my area, where I'm from, there's a lot of pirates uh, that, that have gone there. And I hope, um, you know, but I will say Leo Jenkins, Without a doubt, you know, he was one of those guys you, you, you got to, you know, he without him, we probably not where we're at at all. You know, he, he just won't gonna take no for an answer, which is the, the attitude you got to have or had to have back then. With Like you referenced, we talked about that book reading, uh, you know, we everybody should have a copy of that. Um, it will be read as a freshman reference, you know, to, to how far we have come as a university. But, you know, I think, you know, you know with, 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 with Leo and with uh with um robert morgan and those guys and you know those are those are the kind of things that you you know or those are the people that laid the groundwork you know for what we're seeing now i mean you know look at how beautiful a stadium we have now and you know I, you know i can remember back when i was there it was nice but it was you know it was kind of, i guess it was a kind of you know now it's an arms race basically is what things are for recruiting and things of that nature and of course it's getting even more murky but uh, because of, you know, different other things that are going on. But, you know, when it's all said and done, you know, it's, uh, you still play, the, you still play with, with the same number of players on each team and it's all that, you know, everybody's got to go, uh, you know, by the same set of rules as far as that goes. But, um, you know, I, I, the person, I, you know, like I said, Robert Morgan, I knew him very well. And, uh, you know, I think, you know, when, it, when we were able to get to medical school, it's, to me, it, it – the academia went up, you know, the, um, you know, cause it's always been knocked as a party school, which, you know, it is, you know, there's, I'm not going to lie. You know, I had my share of parties down there <laughs> without a doubt, but it's not, you know, you can go, I, you know, I live in 
in Dunn and Campbell College, you can they have parties over there. So it's not like it's it's just uh, you know one of those things. But uh, you know you know I guess one of the things that uh, you know that I remember about years and years ago was just you know the good things about it, and and I think it's still to this day to a certain extent is you know you know once a pirate always a pirate that's that's just me not everybody's that same way but i would say you know we you know we pirate it's a spe- special to be part of pirate nation in my opinion you know we can go many places where around the world i you know i've been i've driven i, I drove to uh, i think blaze was three years old i drove to the gallery dot furniture combo in houston just me and my wife thank god i got a my wife's a you know, loves football and she 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 you know so we were we drove there and uh, i think gerard was a quarterback it was it was a we played texas tech and i think uh coach mcneil was on the other side of the ball mike leach was coaching us and clingsbury was at quarterback and but it was really nice because we were they were talking about tearing the astrodome down at that time and i thought i hey to me it was very still very nice i think it's still still there's still up as far as i know i know it was building reliance stadium I know I got a little off subject because I told you I'm I'm tend to, I'm I, I love talking about sports. But getting back to what the original things were, Pat Drawn was big around Dunn. Um, you know, I, I know he gave a lot to the university. I don't know if pe- a lot of people know him that well, but um, I know he got he, he got killed in a car wreck at a very early age. But he was very passionate, and I saw the passion in him when he would you know in um, when we would go out there, our high school football team would go out there on Fridays, you know, not every Friday, but, you know, at least the start of the season each year. And, you know, he was, he was just, you could tell he was an East Carolina guy. And uh, it really stuck with me. You know, I thought, well, this guy, he, you know, he, he's really passionate about East Carolina. And, uh, and, and so those were very influential people without a doubt. And, um, you know, there's, you know, it's nothing, you know, I think that you get, it didn't, it didn't, it didn't, it didn't something that's just happened by happenstance. There's, and there's many, many others that I don't know, but that, uh, you know, that, that had a big, big, big hand in, in, in start in the starting of what uh, our university and, and the athletic program is as well. You know, it's, it's yeah, certainly, to, um, you know, you, you go back through the years and, you know, the success we've had and the success we'll have in the future. And that's one of the things that makes um, being a pirate so special is that, you know, you know what you have to overcome to have the success we have. Yeah, I agree a hundred percent. I mean, you know, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's, we've always kind of taken that mentality. It's us against the, you know, the world as far as that goes. And, uh, you know, we, we've had some, some, some great years, but you know, the good things about it is, you know, you know, we've had, we've had some, some down years as well, but you know, it's, it's one of those things, you know, we, and every university has, you know, fair weather fans, you know, let's just call them like they are. And it's, but it makes it so much sweeter. Uh, honestly, if, you know, when we're in those down years and we've had some of those down years, obviously. And, uh, you know, but, you know, I, I went to every game, uh, stayed to the fourth quarter final to, I've never left a game early. That's just me. I'm just an old school guy. Uh, and I have but I have no problem with people that have to leave. I have no problem with people who don't have to come. It's just the way – it's my choice. And, uh, you know, I, I look at it like this. If, you know, I'm gonna pay, it, there's only six or seven home games a year. Exactly. So, you know, if you know if, if, if the good Lord gives me the opportunity to be able to get there, I'm going to be there. And I, I thought, you know, I, like I said, I hadn't missed a game in I don't know how long. I, I did miss one back – uh, many, many years ago. Uh, but, uh, and that, the reason I remember it is because I actually married my wife, uh, my wife, Amanda, uh, and we celebrate our 28th anniversary tomorrow. <laughs> so, uh, that game and one of my best friends I was on the phone with, uh, uh Bobby Hill, he, uh, reminded me that, that we actually beat Southern Miss that day. So in, uh, in Greenville. So, uh, I'm hoping that for a repeat tomorrow against South Florida. So that would be good. Yeah. Uh, happy anniversary uh, to you and your wife. And uh, let, let's celebrate, um, like you said, uh, 
on Saturday with, with that victory uh, down in Boca Raton over the uh, USF Bulls at FAU Stadium. Um, you know, unique circumstances for this one for sure. Uh, let's hope uh, we're able to get a much needed victory uh, coming off um, the loss to Navy last weekend. But um, you referenced that 2000 galleryfurniture.com bowl when the Pirates defeated Mike Leach and the Texas Tech Red Raiders. Um, Cliff Kingsbury at quarterback, who's obviously an NFL head coach now after serving a time as head coach there in Lubbock with Texas Tech. But uh, that made me, um, you know, want to transition to what are some of your other uh, top memories as far as Pirate football in terms of um, road venues? Um, I know you've probably, like uh, my family and I, we've traveled to watch the Pirates, a lot of different road venues. So what are some of the top ones you've been to and the ones that you would consider favorites? Yeah, I mean, the the venues wise, I mean, I was I know it, uh, in, in, in and with the Pirate Club, I know when I first started uh, being a rep years ago, um, one of the um, the perks of being a rep was that you got the, if you were the top rep or whatever, you got to fly with the team. And so that was that was really neat. Um, and so I was able to. Um, uh I wasn't much on flying, to be quite honest with you. As a matter of fact, I, I'll admit the first time I ever flew was with <laughs> – we flew out of – I think we flew out of Kinston. Uh, I think Coach Logan – it was Coach Logan then. Uh, we flew to UAB uh, down at – I guess it was Birmingham. They were playing in that big stadium with about – there wasn't a hardly – there was nobody there and it was cold. Oh, yeah, the, I, the, the old gray ghost, Legion yes, Field. Yes, but – I, I, but the thing that, that sticks out in my mind on the way down there, you know, again, I was scared to death of the flight going down there. And uh, I wasn't the only one because some of them players, I think, were as well. Because we were flying into a thunderstorm. And I think uh, Mick Crawford was working with the Pirate Club then, and he was sitting with me. And I, the lights flashed. And we were getting close to landing. And uh, he said, I said, is that lightning? He said, no, nah, they're just cutting the lights on, you know, lights on, landing lights. And. And then a big pop, he said, now that was lightning. <laughs> so, so when we landed, I told my wife, I called my wife and said, man, you may have to drive back down here and pick me up. That wasn't really one of the big venues, but that was my first flight. I think I was like 40 years old, which has been like 20 something years ago. But things that the ones that I did get to fly, I flew to Miami um, and just being able to, and because also part of the perk was you could stand you know, on the sidelines which was probably not a good thing with me because I'm very uh, competitive. <laughs> I was running up and down the sidelines. I'm sure some of the coaches, I, I stayed out there way anyway. But anyway, uh, you be standing on the, at the Orange Bowl, I know we had Desmond Robinson at quarterback. I want to say Vontae was in. Vontae Leach might have been there then. As a matter of fact, I'm sure Vontae was on that team. Um, but, you know, I, I guess reflecting back, stand, you know, we lost the game, but, I remember, um, you know, just thinking about all the Super Bowls that have been played, and this is before they tore the Orange Bowl down. So that sticks out in my mind. Um, also, uh, you know, flying into – I flew with the team into Marshall. Marshall's a great town, a lot like Greenville, not as big, obviously. But I think, you know, they're, they're, they're a true college town. Very, very – you know, it was very – humbling you know because of the connection that we have because of the plane crash and you know in flying into marshall was was uh and actually that was the game that I, we won because i remember i want to say guy whimper who <laughs> started i think he started out as a tight end but ended up being a tackle ran a guy down who was a i can't remember if he, what happened but anyway it saved a touchdown and i think we ended up beating marshall in that game but and I don't remember what the year was, but that but, uh, was 2005. That was Skip Holtz. Yeah, first that year. sounds because I just, I just about, remember uh, I've been to Marshall, but we did not make that trip and we were watching on television. And like you said, um, I mean, James Pinckney yeah. threw, the, threw the pick. And I remember the Marshall corner running it down the sideline right in front of yep. our bench all of a exactly. sudden you see guy whimper shot shot out of a cannon and like my dad was like did you see that that offensive lineman offensive tackle just ran he that guy was, down 
<laughs> he was a freak of an athlete. I mean, really, he was a big guy. You know, I know he he went on and played in the NFL, I believe, yeah, for some that, years. That play, um, you know, the scouts, of course, saw that play and saw an offensive lineman running down a, a corner like that, uh, angle yeah. or not, and that earned him that opportunity he got. And I think he played with the New York Giants and maybe some other. Yeah, teams. he did. Yeah, he did, and. But and then uh, yeah, I got to fly. I flew in uh, right after the, the mass shooting, I think, in Virginia Tech. That was kind of a weird game. I flew with the team up there for that. Um, kind of sticks out of my mind. The bad thing, I, I, I felt like I was a jinx because it seemed like we lost about every game that I flew with them. Uh, I do remember we uh, we were, they flew myself and my wife to um, to the um, to the, the Tulsa game when we won the conference championship. Right. Back in 08. And, um, yeah, that was pre- and that was pretty cool because <laughs> it was pretty weird. They, they came over, the Tulsa people were doing some kind of giveaway type thing. And anyway, I had to go on the Tulsa side, stand amongst the players, and then answer a question about the Duke Walker Award, which I knew the answer to, thank God. But I thought these people would be helping me. There was no help whatsoever. On the, <laughs> you know, they were like – because – I had narrowed it down to like three people and you, I ended up winning like a, some kind of watch or something. I think I gave it to blaze, but it was like, you know, I don't wear a watch, but <laughs> it was pretty neat. I mean, I've had a lot of experiences. Um, you know, obviously, uh, the peach bowl. I mean, I'm sure I was there at that freezing with everybody else, but, uh, you know, back then, uh, I, I don't drink anymore, but back then I did. So I'm not going to lie and say, I, I had had plenty of antifreeze in me this, that day, but it was it was quite a it was quite a uh, I don't even know how to explain it. It was um, you know being down that many points and coming back and just watching the air go out of some of my Wolfpack friends was uh, you know it was it was very surreal because um, you know it was it was just you know Blake I think Logan was. Uh, I tell you one thing that people I don't think noticed in that game, or I know I, I thought I, I always noticed. I, I, I got played a little bit of quarterback in high school my senior year. I played defensive back and running back most of the time, but my four years, but my senior year I was a quarterback. But I noticed that they were a little deeper in the shotgun snap. Yep. Than I miss a yard. And and, and 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 well, we, because of his arm strength. But you know what? It all it, it makes that those edge rushers go another yard and yep. it takes a little, takes a little load off you, your quarterback. I often wondered why people don't do that with, with guys that have the arm strength like that. Of course, a lot of guys don't have it like Blake did, but um, there are kids out there, but I know obviously I think Logan had inserted that when Bill Lewis was down there or something that week. But um, anyway, it was, it was, that's, you know, that's obviously, you know, and then you know the other one I, that was so it's such such a, I mean that was a very emotional game and you know exciting game for me uh, as a fan obviously and any, I think anybody that was that bleached purple and then obviously the hurricane game that we played at state um, with you know with Gerard and Keith Stokes and you know just you know the the passion and you know, the people that we had there and all the things that were going on. You know, I remember they were staying in South Carolina. They couldn't get back to Greenville because of the flooding. And that was just a very emotional game as well. Probably more emotional, actually, than the Peach Bowl. But we've had there, – there's been so many, you know, so many really good wins over the years and things. But uh, – and I, I, I've made most of the games. Uh, on, I, I go to a lot of the away games, you know, if I can. Um but definitely home games, I'm definitely there as far as that goes. But uh, it uh, it certainly has been a blessing to me, and I've, I've just enjoyed enjoyed it. And uh, I'll continue to support them. And and uh, and uh, just uh, like I said, venues were, you know, I, the Reliance Stadium. I remember when it was just being built because we we drove to that one. But uh, and I've been to Birmingham too many times now. I think right. it's just. It's uh, definitely been there, but I've been to Houston several times, and that was back before. Actually, Houston, uh, Houston had Kate. Well, they had Keenum kid, Kate Keenum, obviously. Yeah. They had a run of good quarterbacks at a time, you know. There, so, and they're still obviously they're solid. So, but uh, yeah, it's been a, 
it's been a blessing. Like I said, football is pretty much my passion there. Of course, don't get me wrong. Now, I love, I love our baseball program, and I love our basketball program. We just, we just got. It's going, to, you know. They say what I can't remember what these people they say. We it's built. I hear all these crazy stories about it being built on a Indian, back, well, some yeah, kind of Indian burial ground for Minji. Yeah, Johnson. or something like that. But you know, I, I'm excited about you know, Coach Schwartz. Uh, is that that's the new coach? I hope I get his name right. Yeah, is that Mike Mike Schwartz? Mike Schwartz. I, I, he's obviously a defense, and I like it. I saw the. I actually saw the first interview with him the other day. We were talking to him, and he said we got a few kids banged up. But I talked to Blaze, and he said he had watched them practice. And he said <laughs> he said they go at it defensively. I think you know. I don't know if we can shoot, but we're gonna play some defense. So <laughs> it uh, sounds like, uh, and I think that's why he was his his forte was at Tennessee as well. So, but uh, you know, I, I can't say enough about you know. That's really I I, I did uh, my hobbies. I used to play quite a bit of golf, but I broke my leg pretty bad uh, making a mistake when I was 49 by not paying somebody to power wash my house and thought I could do it from about 23 feet, but uh, oh. kind of hindered my golf game. But, uh, but anyway, it, uh, it, uh, it's, you know, it's just pirates is kind of my, it's my, it's my, my passion. It's my, you know, it's kind of gives me something to look forward to and things of that nature. And I try to help in any way I can. I like to thinking of me as being the recreation director. I remember, just uh, I was athletic director. I was with department 32 years full time and eight years part time. And now, believe it or not, I'm back with them again, working just mornings because I can't do but so many hours because I'm pension. But I used to. I mean, those kids growing up in my program, they knew I was a pirate. We know there was no doubt about that when he came to my office. And they would some of them would be wanting to make their decisions, and I would just out. I, I, and I'm trying to pat myself on the back, but I was so do me a favor and just go to Greenville and take a look. And I honestly, and I, I'm not going to lie to you and say I changed 100 percent, but I'll be honest with you. I would say it's better than 50 percent of kids that went down there and at least gave it a legitimate look end up going and being pirate. So I think, you know, it's, it's a hidden it's a hidden gem where it was. I don't think it's as hidden as it was, in, you know, back then. But. I, you know, you, you get out in the green, but when it's just, you know, it's 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 uh, it's just something about it. You know, it always makes me feel good to be down there. So, no doubt, it, it's certainly, uh, you know, as we were discussing off the air over the last thirty years, and what you've seen the enrollment go from between thirteen and fourteen thousand back in the, the Peach Bowl uh, year, uh, something like that, to uh, right around thirty thousand now. So. Uh, what you're saying is certainly true, but at the same time, despite that growth and uh, more than doubling in size, uh, you still have the, the same old uh, pirate mindset of the, the chip on the shoulder uh, mentality because of uh, not getting the respect, um, you know, especially from the in-state schools. It's funny. A lot of times, you know, uh, it's it's the in-state schools that, that in the, the rivalries that, you know, don't want to give you the respect and, but, you talk about traveling nationally and talking to fans, you know, from programs in the Big 12 or SEC or even maybe the Pac-12, and um, they're certainly aware of East Carolina and uh, some of the things we've accomplished as a university and in our athletics. But uh, you, you bring up um, getting young men and women to take a look at ECU. So that's a good transition and segue to your involvement with the ECU Pirate Club. Just talk about uh, your background there when when you uh, initially joined and then uh, taking on the leadership role, both as a rep. And then obviously you won chapter president uh, of the year several occasions. And then uh, you and Mark Meltzer for the tremendous job that, that y'all did. Um, you have the Hudson Meltzer Award, which now is presented annually to the chapter president. Yeah, it was, it was, it's, it's, it's really, um, it was almost by happenstance. A friend of mine, Rob Jones, who's a, um, he's an insurance salesman here in Dunn, but we grew up together and he was actually he's a year or two younger than me, but he called me one day. It was in the, I want to say about mid nineties. And I, honestly, um, when I left, I didn't know that much about the pirate club. Um, and so, um, when, it, when, Big guy who's still there. He came down, <laughs> Matt Maloney. He came down and um, Rob. We went out. Rob went out to eat, and he was talking with Rob about you know 
what they needed to do out of him and things of that nature. Just you know, we, you know, different things were going on. You know, we we had a pat drawing golf tournament and things and stuff and and uh, and so I asked him. I just said, uh, "Well, what do you got to do to be a rep?" And he was so he showed me. You know, you know, back then it was back then it wasn't computerized. <laughs> you know, it was uh, like I said, it was like mid nineties. I want to say. He said, um, you know, just need to sign up, you know, a few people and all this. And if you get to do this, you get this, you know, there's some perks. And I, I remember just, I, you know, I, I was half serious and I was, uh, um, I guess at the time I was, you know, I, I, I wasn't trying to be cocky. I said, well, I can probably sign up a hundred people. And he said, really? And I said, he said, you mean in one year? I said, yeah, probably so. But I do. I, he said, "Well, do do this, you know." So he left me some brochures and things of that nature, and so I just went, you know, people that I knew to went to East Carolina and signed them up, you know. And I think the first that it was like the middle of the summer. I, I want to say, or I can't remember what, what time of the year it was, but anyway, um, make a long story short, um, I think it might have been the third year I was there. Third year as a rep. Um, I signed up 101 or 102, I think it was, new Pirate Club members. And I think it's it's not because – but, I, you know, I'm one of these – again, I'm one of these guys, you know, you know because Rob's – because that's who Rob – after Matt left, Rob said, he won't, you won't, it's, it's, it's harder than you think. And, and which, I mean, which Rob does a, did a great job. It does a great job. I knew a lot of people as well. But, you know, with, I think what helped me, I, it really – whereas – I know a lot of people in Harnett, Johnson, Sampson County, because a lot of those kids grew up in my program, um, playing sports, and we'd be being athletic director for 12 years and recreation director for 20 years. You know, I, it, at that time, I wouldn't – obviously, I wasn't at that point, but um, I did have, a, you know, extensive knowledge as far as people were concerned, so I was able to sign up. And then, you know, it was um, – it just kind of kind of grew from there, you know, and um, – it was, it was, I almost became a, almost became a passion with me. I, I would carry my, I, I had even had a book I'd carry with me about everywhere. My wife thought I was crazy. I'd ask anybody and their brother. I mean, as I told somebody, no, never hurt nobody to me. I mean, I'm, it's just, you know, we're, we're all, you know, we're all human beings. We're all, you know, if, if you went east, it, I got told no, but it didn't, didn't hurt me. So it, uh, I'm not, uh, you know, one of those guys. I've been in fundraising, you know, I raised money for the parks and rec and stuff like that. So it's not, uh, not something different. But, and I wasn't trying to be cocky or anything, to be honest with you. I just wanted to help out and do what I could. And so, but anyway, like I said, it led to what I talked about earlier, you know, being able to fly with a team. I'm not a guy, I don't have a lot of money, you know, I wish I did. If I did, I'd, we'd have, we'd already have the indoor practice facility down there. And Cliff would have, already have his stuff built if I had plenty of money. But, I don't. I, I keep playing the lottery, but so maybe hopefully one day it'll work out. But um, I do. I try to help out in the ways that I can help out, and um, that's by re, you know telling you know re, you know spreading the good word, trying you know it's because it, it is a team. And back then they kind of think there was a it was kind of the uh, theme was the team behind the team, and I think it still is to a certain extent. But you know I was a pirate, you know those years, those three years I was there, and. You know, I, I just, you know, I, I love, I love the, I love being around the, you know, the sports programs, especially, obviously, but not only that, I just love the university. And I think they, you know, they, we've turned out a lot of, you know, not just athletes, but, you know, you know, you got, you got great people, actresses, actors, you know, and all that other thing and just good human beings, you know, so it's not. I was proud to be a pirate. I'm still proud to be a pirate. I'll be proud to be a pirate till good Lord comes and gets me. But, you know, after winning it so, several years, um, and a Mark won it several years before, you, along with with myself. So they finally kind of put it, they finally just, which was very nice of them, they they named it after myself, and it's called the the Meltzer Hudson Award. I think in every year they, they give it to the top rep, which, I, you know, is a good idea. Um, you know, and I, maybe I'll be putting the pressure on them. I told Blaze, I said, you might need to see if they can start putting somebody back on that plane. You know, that'll, that might, that'll get some, that'll get some people going. <laughs> so I don't know how that's going to go. 
I, I don't know if you say anything to Ryan about that, Ryan Robinson or not, but uh, I know that part. I, I don't, I don't know what, what, uh, what all they get now because I just, I just try to spread the word, sign people up. You know, I don't quite do it like I did you, you, years ago, but uh, I'm still, you know, very active. I'm chapter president with Harnett Johnson, in which um, it's probably about time for some, some young blood and uh, to come in there. And I, you know, I'm. I'm excited now. I think we have a good – the Pirate Club that they've got now is really, you know, they really want to be there, really want to do things right. You know, I think they really want to, um, you know, you, I know – I'm and, I, again, I'm just speaking for my son especially. Obviously, he, he's grown up a Pirate. The kid didn't have a chance from day one. I mean, he was born – he's been to every football game. I, I, I don't know if we have, you know, you know, since he, since he was born. So um, – Really, uh, he really poor kid didn't have a chance. Twenty six years old, but you know, I appreciate I appreciate the opportunity they gave him to. I know he was working with Coach Godwin, Cliff Godwin, and um, when uh, he was getting his master's and he was doing his internship with him and uh, Cliff and I think you know Blaze is he's he he don't talk as much as I do for sure. But uh, <laughs> one good thing about it, he's a lot smarter than I am. He's uh. And he uh, he knows how to get things done, and he's you know he's very trustworthy. He's uh, he's a pirate, trust me. It, uh, uh, through and through, and uh, Danielle that works with him, and um, of course you got big guy, and you got Ryan, and you know it's it's just you know uh, Latrenda and all the all of Molly, all those girls have been there for many many years. It's just you know they after COVID and everything, trying to get things back going, back to some kind of normalcy and. Thank God we are hit trending in that right direction. Um, great, great to see the students coming back to the games. I've been really impressed with the uh, student attendance and, and things of that nature. And, you know, it's, uh, I, you know, again, it's just, it's, you know, with, with being a pirate rep and things of that nature, I, as I used to have to go speak and uh, to at a pirate rep kickoff, which is typically at the end of January 1st of February. And, it's, it's, you know, it's some people don't like to ask, and I understand that. That's okay. But like I said, I was, I was kind of, you know, I guess, you know, I, I, I was, everybody's blessed with different set of skills. Obviously, mine might not be a skill. I talk way too much. My wife will tell you just like that. And I think you can tell as well. But, you know, I, when you're passionate about something and you love something, then, you know, it's, it's, it's very easy to talk about. But, uh, Pirate Club's been good to me. I, I you know, like I said, I, I supported them for uh, many years. I, I couldn't tell you exactly what year it was. My, I, you know, I meant to research it, be honest with you, Bubba, but uh, I didn't get time. I want to say the first, it was like late 90s. I know I'm got to be, I'm coming up on my Van Sant, I want to say in the next year or so. So it's been right at 25 years yeah, that yeah. I've been in. So, yeah. So there was a little probably sh that I should have been in, but uh, you know that was my own fault probably for not doing more research about it. But uh, you know I wasn't the one that started it. Obviously, you had the guys that you know that started that way back in you know in uh, the early days, and I think they were they were those were the guys that got the boots on the ground and got the monies and got the things going, and and we just you know now we just continue to. There's a lot of good things going on, and um, I'm very excited about. You know the things you know the, the gifts that we've got going on with the pirate club. Um, you know, I saw the thing just you know, just so many people stepping up and giving monies, and it doesn't. You know, I, it's like I, you know, it do, you don't never know when your hundred dollar giver might end up being your million dollar giver, and so that's the way I kind of approached it. And so I, you know, I know I, I did sign up a person. I don't to say who it was, but it, you know. The first year they were a little bit hesitant, and I think back then it might have been fifty or seventy-five dollars. I don't even remember or something like that. But I know now that they're a lot. They're you're giving at a high level now, so that's the reason I say don't ever discount all you know anybody. I tried to instill that in Blaze. You know, treat everybody. You know, you, you want to treat everybody fairly anyway, but you definitely don't you know don't you know discount anybody whatsoever. So. Absolutely not. And like you're saying, um, you know, whether it's a uh, hundred dollar donor or, uh, you know, those who are able and do give, uh, 
even you know you know five six seven figures or uh, or whatever um appreciate everyone who's given and and that's one of those things you know when you only have so much staff you only have so many hours in the day um there's definitely i, I can imagine how difficult it is to uh, find that balance there as far as communicating and all those sorts of things but you know from your experience and having so much success signing up new pirate club members and just talk about it from that standpoint as far as you know doing what you can to communicate and build those relationships um but at the same time you know being able to uh, to manage your time as effectively as as you have to uh, to get the other aspects of your job done and i'm sure you have even more perspective on that now uh, with, with your son uh, being uh, on board and, and an employee of the pirate club for the last 15 months yeah, without a doubt. I mean, you know, like I said, you it's in in anything in any kind of fundraising. And actually, after I retired from from Parks and Rec, I w- I went to work with a community health center. They had never had a foundation, so I helped get it started and worked there for five years up until this past February. And fundraising fundraising is relationship building. Honestly, that's you know you don't walk into somebody's office that you don't know and ask for money you gotta you gotta build relationships now obviously um you know when i was raising money i if i knew you if i did been friends of mine it was a lot easier because i already had an existing relationship but you know it is you know it is what it is so i you know i I try to to always approach it and you know if if somebody there's always people that have, you know, different excuses for things. And, and, and it's, it's quite all right. It's understandable. You know, maybe they've had a bad experience or maybe they're unable to give this time. But, you know, I always used to ask, hey, is it okay if I, you know, call on you next year or something like that? And I think that, uh, you know, that personal touch or be able to, you know, you know, you know, you know you don't not trying to be pushy, but you still want to let them know that, you know, you know, we, you know, we care about you. We want you to be a part of the team behind the team, which is what I kind of was what we reflected upon earlier back then. And, you know, that's kind of the you know, kind of attitude that I think I tried to, you know, with, you know, I felt good about. And, I, you know, I felt like, um, you know, I didn't want it to feel like we just want to take your money and we never hear from you again. Nobody wants that. You know, and I think that's what we, you know, we talked a little bit earlier about something that's, you know, you know, we it sometimes, you know, you, you get a little bit stagnant. And I think the lifeline of the future of the Pirates are, are you know, some way, shape or form is trying to, you know, we can, we, I know this year, I think they're trended up to almost 7,000 students back in the Pirate Club, you know, where they were, you know, obviously the years of COVID were down and they, you know, weren't there. But um, it's, um, those are, those students becoming young grads, you know, capturing them. And you never know who the, they may be the future. They're definitely the future, in my opinion, of, of how we can get, you know, members that uh, maybe that we haven't had before. Obviously, we, you know, it's always been, a, you know, there's been a, a little bit of stagna- stagnation, I guess, uh, it, with the same group. So uh, the good thing is there's people out there with, that are working with the Pirate Club right now. There, and I forgot to mention one of them, Drew Moeller. And those guys thinking outside the box and doing things, uh, him, Ryan, you know, and um, Danielle and and Blaze and all the the whole group there, I think, and um, you know, John Gilbert and, and JJ McClam, all the group. I, you know, I, I feel like they're all, I guess, uh, as that as the new video looks like, they're all rowing with the same oar. Uh, you know, from that uh, movie, whatever it is, I can't remember. Hoist the colors, I guess that's what I call it. <laughs> but you know, it's pretty cool to me the way they do that. But I do know that, uh, you know, it's, I told Blaze, I said, if you ever, if you ever, uh, if you, you, know, you find a job that you love, you'll never work a day in your life. Now, I'm not going to tell you that, that is, uh, and I was blessed to have that with recreation. I'm not going to tell you, but they're all great days, but it's not day, you know, 90% of the time you enjoy what you do. And I think he does. And I, I think he's he's you know I'm hoping yeah, I'm hoping there everybody up there's seems to be giving him pretty good reviews but like I said you gotta gotta you gotta work it and uh, you gotta you know you gotta get gotta get get some boots on the road and get out there and uh, and uh, and see some people so it's uh, 
but I think they're headed in the right direction. And uh, they, like, again, they're a lot smarter than I am. Yeah, no doubt. Um, as far as some of these things you just touched on, uh, as far as thinking outside the box, and that's a good segue to something we were talking about pre-show. And, you know, through the years, a lot of different things have been done as far as, you know, a discounted season ticket for young grads and, and so on, um, you know, different tangible, and this isn't only young grad, but um, the uh, the Pirate Club in, in general, you know, uh, if you give it 110%, then you get this. Or, and, and something tangible uh, for your donation and, and for uh, giving it at an increased level. Um, something that's been discussed and, you know, actually um, Kyle Barber, who's a member of the, the Sports Objective, one of the co-hosts and an idea he had was the ESPN plus and streaming is such a big deal now. And obviously uh, I'd say a significant number of the pirate club members and season ticket holders have that. Um, so maybe finding a way to package that with your pirate club membership to um, encourage the people who are not a member of the pirate club. Um, maybe that's another incentive or, or other things along those lines that would uh, appeal to people in 2022. Yeah, I agree. I think that I mean any anything and everything that we can do on the ta- is is on the table. I mean, we we want to continue to um you know, I've even uh, I, you know, I, I love what Clemson did with the IPTE. I paid 10 a year club. I, you know, it's uh, because it's you know, it's like you said those kids coming out, especially the young young ones, you know, they they said they got student loans, a lot of them or they've got they're not making a lot of money right to start with. So you've got to, like I said, capture that. You know, what can we do? I think the ESPN Plus is a great idea. You know, I think that's a, that's something that uh, uh, I think you said Kyle did that. That's that's I think that's those are kinds of fun saying. There's a lot of you know brainstorming that can be done. Um, I think that's what they're doing. I think they're trying to figure new ways and, like you said, with discounted tickets, things, anything we can do to continue to, to build, you know, build our team. And it's, it, you know, this is, this isn't, it's, this is our university. You know, this is, you know, it's not mine. It's what it is. It's mine. It's yours. It's everybody. It's a pirate. So it's, uh, you know, I, I'm proud, you know, I'm proud to be a, a part of, you know, of East Carolina, you know, you know, to be, to be a pirate. Um, and it's just, you know, it's just, just, you know, it's the way I'm built. I felt like, um, it's a perfect fit for me and, my family as well. My kids got a great education as well as myself. What, what, I what I didn't squander, which was my own fault, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's just been a, it's, it's kind of been a blessing to, to me and my family and got a, a lot of great memories and look forward to a lot more, you know, um, this upcoming season and years and, and, you know, the baseball and the basketball. And of course I can, I always, I, I, I hate this, but it is a sports program, so I guess I do harp back to it. But I'm a sports guy, so uh, you know that's kind of what it, what it's like. But uh, yeah, I think that's a very good idea with the ESPN Plus thing. Final thing I had for you, um, you know, going hand in hand with the Pirate Club, uh, you know, with the podcast, we have a ton of uh, former letter winners, not only football but men's basketball, baseball, and then also our Olympic sports on the podcast uh, talking about their East Carolina experience. And, you know, they've been really appreciative of the opportunity to come on and uh, you know, reflect on the time in the purple and gold. And that's something that, uh, you know, building those relationships and making those uh, letter winners who uh, help get the programs to where they are today um, feel important and realize how important they are. Uh, that's something that can certainly go a long way. And then kind of along with that, uh, during their days uh, at ECU, um, you know, current student athletes, I think, um, you know, we need to plant those seeds and really educate them on what the Pirate Club is, what it does, why it's so important as far as, uh, you know, the value of a student athlete's uh, scholarship. And then also the um, these Pirate Club members are going to be the ones uh, – not uh, solely, but uh, largely probably contributing to their NIL opportunities. And and so right. just getting the student athlete to be appreciative of uh, what the Pirate Club is and making them hopefully want to give once they leave ECU. 
Yeah, that's that's very big. And, I, you know, I was again, I, you know, back when I was that was one of the things I, I got to know a lot of the athletes. I remember um, I know Cliff probably Cliff Godwin probably thought I was crazy because I signed him up as soon as he got out of school, uh, got him signed up in the young grad program. And then I just basically stalked him all around the country, wherever he went, Notre Dame, Miss Ole Miss. It didn't matter. So, <laughs> but uh yeah, but he always gave back, and I, you know, he certainly gave back recently. And he was one of the guys I signed up. You know, I signed up Chris Johnson or, originally, and a lot of these guys, you know, you they, they um, you know, I'm I, I think Danielle is doing a really good job. I think she's in charge of the letter winners. Um, they they made a put a big emphasis on that with the Pirate Club, and uh, so that's that's really big. I think she's done a good job with that, and I think. When you know they're in the, they're you know in the infant stages, of trying to get it back stronger and and get these guys back and get them on the sidelines, get them where you know because they they put you know put a lot of time in, a lot of blood, sweat, and you know and tears as well, you know. And I think that's uh, without a doubt, um, you know, getting getting some of these guys back, you know, is is big. You know, I'd love to see Ernest Biner back, and you know. And all the, you know, a lot of old guys would be nice to get back. Of course, they're getting kind of old and like me, they might can't walk too good. So, but, <laughs> but, um, I, you know, I have seen some of the players coming back. And like you said, it's an important, you know, things have changed a little bit with this, you know, with NIL and stuff. But, uh, those, like I said, it's, uh, it is what it is. We have to adjust. We have to, you know, we have to figure out what we're going to do. And, we, you know, we, we need to be we need to be proactive, not reactive. I guess that's, and I'm sure they they've got a plan, and uh, and I, I I'm, I'm hopefully it's going to we'll execute it and and continue on, and uh, you know I expect uh, it's a it's well I'll leave you with one with one of these things. <laughs> Somebody always we, they they um ask me what I think the record you know for a football team is going to be. Every year, it wouldn't matter if we're bad, you know supposed to be bad, good, or indifferent. I think I expect to be twelve and zero. You know, if I didn't, I wouldn't go down there. I'd always kid them that way. But I will say this: you know, I think we're improving. You know, we had a tough, 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 tough game last week. You know, I always emphasize to people sometimes. You know, especially in, in sports and athletics, and I've seen this a million times, especially even in youth athletics. You know, one player don't you know to lose a game. You had 60 minutes to score as many points as you want, or you had, you know, 60 minutes to make the game win at these tackles and stuff. So I'm a, I'm a I'm a team guy, and you know, although some of the guys you know, quarterbacks usually get a lot of glory, but they also get a lot of talk about them when things don't go that well. But you know, it, it's a it's a full fledged team effort in where it be baseball, football, basketball, and don't one person win it. It's, you win with a team, you know, and you lose with it by a team. But uh, as long as you're giving effort, it's not like, you know, these players, I promise you, they're not – they're. Uh, I look at them as like told Blaze. I said, that's somebody's, that's somebody's son out there that, you know, he, he's not – they're not trying to do something wrong, you know, whether it be uh, whatever, drop a pass or whatever. But, uh, you know, that's the thing about it. These guys work their tails off. And the young ladies that play soccer and the basketball and everything else, everybody's worked busting their tail for the university to win. And uh, um, I applaud them and uh, I applaud their effort and I just appreciate it. And that's why that's why I give to the Pirate Club. That's why I give my time. That's why I give my effort. And because I can, you know, I can't play obviously anymore. My years are way long gone. But what I can do is is help out and. Uh, trying to, you know, sign up new Pirate Club members. And uh, like I said, maybe uh, as I used to tell people, I, I'd stay in their office. I think they would just write me a check just so I'd finally leave because I, I could talk with about the best of them, as you can tell. So, but I appreciate it. So. Yeah, I certainly appreciate um, you spending a little over an hour with us this afternoon. And it's easy to see with the passion uh, or – the passion that you have for the Pirates and with that passion, the success that you had and continue to have as a, a chapter president for the ECU Pirate Club. And I know, uh, I know big guy and, you know, Ryan Robinson and uh, all the former um, executive directors and uh, folks associated with the Pirate Club 
are so appreciative of all you've done and Pirate Nation on the whole. But, um, you know, have enjoyed the conversation and we'd love to have you back on down the road. Thanks so much, brother. Anytime, my friend. Just, just let me know. Pirate Nation, you've been watching A Pirate's Life for me on the Sports Objective. Remember to follow us on social media on Twitter and TikTok at the Sports OBJ. On Instagram at the Sports Objective. Like and follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. For longtime pirate Perry Hudson, I'm Bubba Rosenbaum. You've uh, been tuned in to the Sports Objective. And as always, go Pirates. Watching the Sports Objective, the podcast for pirates.